header. In this video we are going to take a look at these two vintage Russian speakers. But first of all, I need to install some dust caps on them. Okay, so randomly some speakers just don't have dust caps installed. Maybe they were put in a in a cloth back in the old days. They, the whole speaker was covered in a cloth and tied at this end, so dust could not really get into it. Uh, today this isn't done anymore, so I'm installing dust caps because coil gaps and uh, dirt and dust do not mix well. So I had this uh, piece of it's not cardboard it's just thicker paper it's a dark gray almost black and i cut these two things with this which barely cuts but whatever and with the help of other tools so there's that they are cut and now i need to glue them on uh, to not change the appearance of the speakers too much i cut them to to a minimum so they just just fit right there in the middle and I think they actually fit quite well with the shape and size and color of the speaker so there uh, that's that now I need to glue them and I will use some uh, uh, weirdly enough wood glue because it's quite thick I don't want uh, a glue that can uh, drip inside the voice coil that would just ruin the speaker so yeah let me get that glue and about these uh, speakers i don't know anything i honestly have no idea so if you are russian maybe you, you can help us decoding this information nothing else on the speaker itself i will at least test the the impedance although I'm actually checking uh, resistance, but they should be close enough for us to make an opinion. Yeah, so it's 7.5, which means uh, 8 ohms. Let's make sure the other one is also the same. Close enough. Yeah, it has a bit of higher resistance, but still close enough to the other one that they are okay. And yeah, let's glue the dust caps on. And this one is almost done, so I will simply put something like this, yeah, if I don't drop it that would be ideal, right in the center so it holds it uh, down while it dries. And there's that, now let me do the second one off camera and then let them dry. And yes, I will also fix this problem on the underside so we don't uh, make the speaker look worse. Okay, dust cup is uh, almost dried. I can think I, yeah, I can even leave this without any issues. Put some speaker glue on the back side of this thing. And these are really cool. As you can see, these particular wires. I've seen this uh, on a few speakers from back in the day. They were just popped like that in place with uh, rubbers which rubbers are actually soft even after who knows 50 years this will show up a bit uh, because the paper just got wet so i'm not sure when it dries out if it still remains exactly like this maybe it uh, lights and lightens a little bit but it still looks better and it's fixed so it will not tear in that area and yeah i think the the center cap actually looks nice in my opinion it fits with the speaker so I will let everything dry and then give them a test. 
Okay, back to these speakers. Yes, sadly that remained in there, but at least it's fixed and it will not rip further, but it's a bit darker. Yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, they have stains from when they put glue on them when they build them, so not such a big deal. Uh, much safer with this dust uh, caps in position. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I told you the impedance. I think it's 8 ohms. The resist is around 8 ohms so yeah I'm guessing the impedance also I still couldn't yeah couldn't decipher this thing anyway at this point what can I do let's give them an audio test and see how they sound and then I will give you a frequency response with a program on my phone it will not be a really accurate thing just so we get a an impression at least. So let's get to it. First a song that has nothing to do with this type of speakers but yeah it's copyright free and it has a bit of bass, a bit of highs and mids so whatever. Yeah, so obviously from the size of the speaker and the size of the magnet, although I think it's uh, an eco, it doesn't really have too much uh, bass, but uh, overall, yeah, it tries to produce bass, it moves a lot, but you cannot hear it, it's too small, anyway. Uh, overall a good speaker, decent uh, sounding in my opinion, and if you hear a hiss during this song in all of my tests, it's there from the song, it's not being produced by the speakers, so yeah, let's try and give it something a bit more uh, in tone with uh, the time it was made. Okay, so yeah, good enough sounding, uh, the, when you hit it with a bit of bass it, it, it loses it, so it cannot reproduce bass at the same time uh, as mids and highs too well. I think this it's, it's a too soft of a membrane for, for being a full range, or it was played a lot and it's, it's moving too easily. Yes, I could give it a, a coat of... Uh, this thing from Simply Speakers, maybe it could help, but uh, mm, I'm not sure uh, if it's a good idea because even the rest of the membrane, as you can see, it's quite soft and yeah, I will leave it as is. So at this point, let me give it a frequency response test. I will use the other one to make sure both of them are working perfectly and be back to you. 
this is the software that I will be using, audio tool. It's a quite nice software and as you can see it can produce a graph of the frequencies from the sound you make around it. Uses the internal speakers, speakers, micro, microphone of the mobile phone. It can use the lower part microphone or the back microphone as some call it, but it's in the top of the phone actually. And yeah, obviously I will record this. You can set peak on or off if you want the lines to remain in the highest position. Uh, from 30 to 20,000 Hertz, logarithmic sweep. I will uh, play through this thing and see what we get. And obviously, uh, I will shut up during the test itself, the one that we actually record. Because otherwise I will spoil all the results if I don't shut up. So be back when this is recorded. Okay, so this is the resulting graph. This lower part starting from here, so this part here, don't take it into consideration. This, I don't know what was creating it, because in reality I didn't see the speaker creating this. So maybe something in my environment uh, at the moment creates uh, this, this li uh, really low frequency. The speaker you can take it from here and consider it would simply go uh, down. So as you can see, it actually only starts working at about 250 Hertz. So uh, this thing doesn't really produce bass. This is more like a mid-range and it st starts to fall off. So it's not ideal in high frequency either, although it's it's decent. You can hear the high high frequencies, but it starts to drop off here. So yeah, mid range to highs, it can produce them, but if you want to use it in a in a box with something, you need to put in a, a speaker that can handle a, a, a bass. It's, yeah, it's clear. Anyway, and uh, yeah, that's about that. Let's give it a excursion test at low volume, obviously it's an old speaker, don't want to damage it in any way, and let's see how it goes. Okay, so that was the excursion. Uh, it was about the max that you could give it without uh, any distortion. So yeah, it was starting to struggle if I would increase the volume. So yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't call this uh, uh, full ranges, mid range plus high. Yeah, that's about it for them. But quite interesting uh, little Russian, I'm guessing. If anybody knows more about them, please write in the comments. Really, really, really light. So for something portable, these are like like they are not there, honestly. And yeah, that's that. Hope you liked this video. In which case, please give it a like. Check out my other videos. Maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And uh, as always, see you in the next one. Bye.